Well, welcome back to another episode of All Access with the Profs, live from Billsworth Hall. I'm Kara Guna. And I'm Nick Rizzo. And Kara, Rowan's spring sports teams are starting to approach their midseason form, but we just got big news this week regarding one of our winter sports teams as well. Absolutely. Our softball and baseball teams have looked really good to start off the year, and our winter sports to get in for surprise next season. But mm -hmm. we've got a lot to talk about today as this episode of All Access starts right now. <laughs> During the week, the Rowan softball team finished up their non-conference play with a game against the doubleheader split against Swarthmore on Tuesday. The Profs won game one, 13-5, in five innings and dropped game two, 4-3. Rowan scored four runs in the first inning off of a Corey Haig and Grace Shikaita single, along with two walks. Then in the second inning, Cat Thomas grabbed an RBI sack fly and Haig collected another RBI on a fielder's choice. Although Swarthmore was able to cut the deficit to one, 6-5s, Rowan offense was not done yet. The Profs added one run in the third and then exploded for six runs in the bottom of the fifth. Three singles, two walks, and a sack fly allowed for Rowan to get the win 13-5. In game two, Liz McCaffrey doubled and Cat Thomas singled to get Rowan on the board 2-0 in the bottom of the first. The Garnett were able to get it up 2-2 in the third and then in the fourth, Peyton McNair singled to give Rowan back the lead 3-2. At the top of the seventh, a two RBI single was the difference maker to give Swarthmore the 4-3 win. Between two games, pitcher Riley Lutz went six and two third innings, gave up six earned runs, six hits, struck out five, and threw 158 pitches, earning one win and one loss. Rowan is ranked number 15 in the nation and will open up conference play with a doubleheader against William Patterson in North Jersey tomorrow. In a three-day stretch of Rowan baseball taking the field from Monday to Wednesday, the team continued their dominant play on Monday and Tuesday, but unfortunately their success would run out on Wednesday. Let's take it from the beginning with Rowan traveling to Penn State Abington on Monday. The Profs made easy work of the Nittany Lions, taking home a 16-0 win in just five innings of play due to rain. Catcher Brian Galante went 4-for-4 four four with two runs and two RBIs, and Chris Kershia went 2-for-2 two two driving in four runs. Pitchers Zach Grace, Jason O'Neill, and Chase Riger combined for the two-hit shutout. More of the same was on tap for Tuesday, this time at the Nest in Glassboro, as the Profs took down Haverford College 15-2. Anthony Schooley had a career-high five RBIs, Carson Harcourt had three, and Matt Choi tossed a gem on the mound earning the win, going six innings, giving up three hits, two walks, no earned runs, and striking out five. Coach Mike Dixon and company's eight-game win streak would come to a screeching halt on Wednesday, though, as number 10 nationally ranked Rowan fell to number two nationally ranked Salisbury 6-4. Dylan Maria and Phil Sedalis both homered, but it wasn't enough to overcome the Seagulls' three-run second inning and two-run sixth inning. The Profs now sit at 13-4 overall and will kick off conference play this Sunday in a doubleheader against William Patterson. The Rowan men's swimming team placed 11 student-athletes on the 2022-23 New Jersey Athletic Conference team, which was announced Wednesday, with seven people earning multiple accolades. Jack Watson led the way with seven awards, earning first-team honors in the 100 back and second-team honors in the 50 free, and was part of five relay teams. Paul Ritter garnered six, while Joe Rucci, Michael Fracciola, Tobias Candley each had four. The all-conference selections were based upon the finishes at the Mets Conference Championships, while special awards were determined by a vote of the league's head coaches. The 200 free relay team of Watson, Jimmy Kundratz, Ritter, and Matt Gennaro were selected to the first team, as well as Rucci, who picked up a pair of awards in both the 100 and 200 fly. In total, five of the profs all relay team are in conference region selection. Watson, Candley, Ritter, and Alex Violin in the 400 relay. Candley, Justin Go Goglia, Violin, and Watson in the 800 free relay. Fracciola, Henry Lich, Rich, Ritter, and Watson in the 200 medley relay. And Fracciola, Ritter, Rucci, and Watson in the 400 medley relay were all second team honorees. Individually, Watson in the 50 free, Ritter in the 100 free, Candley in the 500 free and 200 back, Rucci in the 200 IM, and Kevin Yaganasawa in the 200 fly all earned second team honors. Rowan finished this season with a 4-3 record, finishing third at the Mets Championships. Watson was one of five profs to qualify for the NCAA Championships, where he was named All-American in two events in the 53 and 200 backstroke. Lacrosse kept the train rolling this week with two more wins. 
First on Saturday, the home fans got a show with a 17-7 win over Stevenson in Glassboro. Jamie Cutrera tied a career high with four goals, while Juliana Corson and Aaron Renshaw also added four each. Elena Corson, Molly Green, and Michaela Donnelly followed up with three goals apiece, and in net, Mel Rogers made her first start of the year and matched her career high with six saves. Cabrini was next up on Wednesday, and they suffered a similar fate as Stevenson and during a 16-8 loss to the profs. Jamie Cutrera stayed hot, netting a new career-high seven goals, the most by a prop this season and most in a game since Ashley Lechleiter had seven against Kane last season. Hannah Lombardo contributed three goals and an assist, and Riley Schalt made a career-high 16 saves in goal. The Profs have now won five straight and are enjoying a 7-2 record on the season. Here's the weekly and regional rankings for the spring sports here at Rowan. The men's track and field team is ranked number 19th nationally by the United States Track and Field Cross Country Association and number one in the metro region. The women's track and field team is slotted at number 23 nationally and number one in the metro region as the association released its first rankings of the season. Baseball comes in at number 10 in the newest D3Baseball.com Top 25 poll, a spot up from last week. Softball remains at number 15 in the National Fast Pitch Coaches Association D3 poll. Both the men's and women's track and field teams will be competing this weekend at Widener's Danny Curran Invitational. The baseball team 13-3 will take on William Patterson to open up and jack play this weekend. Softball squad, who is 17-3, also kicks off conference action with two games at William Patterson on Saturday. Making a switch to winter sports now, it was announced this week that men's basketball head coach Joe Crispin will be taking his talents to Penn State to be an assistant on their coaching staff. In six seasons as Rowan's head coach, Crispin had a 114-54 and overall record, capturing two NJAC championships and making three NCAA tournament appearances. Congratulations to Coach Crispin, and we wish him all the best in his next chapter. We'll be right back with more All Access as Sam Prince brings you some national news. I'm Sam Prince with your Pro Sports Talk. Yesterday was opening day for the MLB. For the first time in Yankees franchise history, the Yankees had a shutout win on opening day as they beat the San Francisco Giants 5-0. Yankees star ace Garrett Cole struck out 11 batters, allowing zero runs in the victory. The New York Mets beat the Miami Marlins 5-3. It was a back-and-forth game until Brandon Nimmo had a two-run double in the top of the seventh to take the lead. The reigning NL champions, Philadelphia Phillies, lost their season opener 11-7 against the Texas Rangers. Rangers' newly acquired star ace Jacob deGrom struggled heavily against Philadelphia as he gave up five runs. But Texas would rally back in the bottom of the fourth as they scored nine runs to take the lead. As the Final Four is coming up this Saturday, for the fourth time ever, there are no number one seeds left in the tournament. The first game is slated for Saturday night at 6.09 p.m. as number nine seed FAU plays number five seed San Diego State. Then later that night, number five seed University of Miami will be playing number four seed UConn. The winner of those two matchups will play each other on Monday night for the national championship. Ravens star quarterback Lamar Jackson has requested for a trade from Baltimore after getting franchise tag. Jackson is looking for a fully guaranteed contract. Possible teams that will be trading for Lamar Jackson are the New England Patriots, Indianapolis Colts, Washington Commanders, and the Atlanta Falcons. That was your pro sports talk. I'm Sam Prince, and now to our next segment on All Access. Welcome to our next segment of All Access. I'm here with my boy Josh and Kyle. I'm Rob, and we're just going to jump in some topics real quick. So to start, next team to win a championship in the Philadelphia area. What are we thinking, Kyle? I'll start with you. I mean, honestly, Sixers always choke. Eagles is going to be hard to get back the way the NFL is. And the Phillies, yes, they got Trey Turner. But honestly, I'm going to go with the forgotten hero. I'm going to go with the Union. I mean, they made it. Ooh. They didn't win it. Good pick. But... I think the Union got something cooking. They're always having good roster, good depth. So I'm, my pick is the Union. Yeah, interesting. Oh, man, that's a good pick with the Union. It's hard to pick. It's hard to go against that one. But I'm actually going to go with the Philadelphia Phillies. Yes. I think 
that they had a wonderful Cinderella story. Nobody predicted them to get to the World Series. They did it. They fought hard, and they ultimately lost to a better team in the Houston Astros. But picking up guys like a Trey Turner helps them. I think the Phillies are going to probably be the favorites in the NL uh, Conference to get back to the World Series. Because like you, I think the Eagles are going to have a tough time getting back to the Super Bowl with the division getting tougher. Mm -hmm. And Philly, and when it comes to the 76ers, it's just not just that, hey, it's just the hard and chokes or NB struggles. No, you still got to find a way to beat the Boston Celtics and the Milwaukee Bucks. They're the top horses. They're the top two horses in the Eastern Conference. That's a great point, Josh. I don't agree with you uh, much, but I have to say I do uh, agree with you on this topic here. <laughs> I do really like the Phillies to try and get back in that position. Now, listen, they were obviously in the World Series last year, and in baseball, it's probably very, probably one of the toughest sports to get back to that uh, level, get back to the World Series in back-to-back -back years. But man, Philly, the Eagles have lost a lot of pieces on defense. Well, another sport very difficult to get back in the Super Bowl, especially after losing. You know, they have that Super Bowl hangover. And, yeah, the 76ers, I mean, if you watched that celtics Bucks game last night, everyone thought the Bucks were the team to beat. The Celtics wiped them. Those are the top two teams in the East. I don't know if Philly could keep up with them, so I have to agree with you on that one. I really like the Phillies. Union? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not really no. a soccer guy. I could, I'll take your word for it, though. All right. I'll take your word on it. I so, look, I mean, Union's they, catching up yeah, heat in they the city. They made some moves. They're obviously getting a new facility. I, I don't know about a new stadium, but I know they're just – Union's huge. It's mm -hmm. growing a lot. Back to the Phillies real quick, it's just their pitching is just it's, it's just not there. I don't know if mm -hmm. they can compete. The thing with Philadelphia right now for all the sports, are they the top one or two dog in their conference in the league? Eagles, no, everything changes. Division, they're really good, not going to take it away. They're going to go far, but I don't know if the Eagles, you know, it's just it's just so-so. You wouldn't you say either. the Phillies are a top team in the NL? No, I, I, can, I can say that. I gotta say that, like top. Three, yeah, you gotta but, remember their run last year was pretty majestic yeah. too. It wasn't they weren't really supposed to be there. Full and of Reese honestly. getting hurt. Exactly. And we but, Harper listen, is still out, but he expected he'd come back what later this yeah. summer. Yeah. Listen, I do love that Trey Turner acquisition though. I mean, he's he balled out in the uh, World Baseball yeah. Classic with five home runs. Yeah. So listen, it's gonna be a fun season with the opening day, uh, including yesterday. It's gonna be a good good year. Yeah, but like, who's not having a fun season right now? Is the Baltimore Ravens. So yeah. Lamar Jackson Oof. is constantly fighting on Twitter with other GMs, the NFL. He wants to get signed somewhere he wants to play, but is a team willing to give up two first rounders with that transition tag, plus that all that guaranteed money? He wants like close to Deshaun Watson numbers, and I don't know if he's gonna get it. Guys, where do you think he's gonna end up? I'll go first, man. Let's call it what it is. I think the Colts are the front runners right now. They have the number one. They have the number four overall pick in the draft. Mm -hmm. They got the most money, and I think they got the best capital to give the Baltimore Ravens in terms of tra in terms of trading. Now, will they? Will Jim Ursay, owner of the Colts, pull the trigger on him? I do not know. I would if I were Jim Ursay, because Lamar Jackson is a dynamite football player. He's a former MVP. He's a Madden cover player, and. He cannot be stopped once he get off the pocket. He is the modern day Mike Vick, and you also got John for Taylor back there. Mm -hmm. Who's stopping that run game? Yeah, no, I mean I have to agree with you. I really like the Colts for the fit for Lamar Jackson. Now I know everyone was speculating the Patriots. Uh, we mm -hmm. have Meek Mill out there. Yeah, do a little recruiting. Well, yeah. I can tell you for Champions. a fact from Robert Kraft, mm -hmm. they said they would not be going after Lamar Jackson. Yeah, I know. I really don't like that fit too. I feel like Lamar is a certain type of player that Bill Belichick has never worked with in his career. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously Bill Belichick. Working with Tom Brady for most of his career, you know. Mm -hmm. Now Mac Jones, yeah, pure pocket type passes. player, exactly. Yeah. Belichick is always a true. So listen, guy. like the Colts do have the pieces. I mean, when they brought in Matt Ryan, they really thought they were going to be a playoff contender. Obviously, Matt Ryan washed. He's washed. That. I'd have to agree mm -hmm. with that. So I mean, yeah, the pieces are there. He'll have a true number one in Michael Pittman. You know, the receivers mm -hmm. have always been an issue for him. Um, obviously, Jonathan Taylor would be a scary running game, scary backfield. So yeah, I do like that. But going back to the whole. Uh, Money situation, I feel like Deshaun Watson, not to get too off topic, he ruined the whole thing. The Browns really ruined this whole, um, you know, salary, salary exactly, for the quarterbacks. These guys are getting too much guaranteed money, especially with a guy like Lamar Jackson who really can't stay on the field year to year. I mean, I can't blame teams for not giving him the money he wants, but, I mean, what do you think about that, Kyle? I mean, I agree. I I'm not going to say it's collusion, but NFL owners aren't going to want to pay a guy $200 million, especially with his play style. Yes, he's been great, and he was an MVP three, four years ago, but – he missed the last two playoffs, you know. He missed the last couple games of the season. It's just not sustainable. So we'll see where he goes. He could end up probably back in Baltimore. If no, none of these teams, he doesn't have the market, doesn't have the agent. If no one wants him, then he might just sign no, whatever. I disagree. With no. Do you think he goes? I, I, I think, I think, 
I think I disagree with your take with the collusion. I think there is collusion. Mm. I think there's something going on with here because I've never seen this before. Don't tell me that he can't stay healthy when these dudes, all these quarterbacks seem to can't stay healthy. Jimmy Garoppolo just got money from Oakland. Jimmy, how many times, how many times Jimmy Garoppolo has been out for San Francisco? The thing is, the, though, it's $32 million yeah. versus $180 million. The dude is a unanimous, not unanimous, but he's a former MVP. It's not his fault that his team can't give him legit receivers to throw the ball to or an he's offensive got Mark line. Andrews. So he's have, had stuff. Don't give me that. Don't he's give had me. stuff, but, like, if he's an MVP, has it he doesn't matter top, what weapons he has. Has he ever had, he had, 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 had a top 10 receiver? No, most teams don't. Listen, there you go. Said, it's just too much money. It's, it's too, too much, much money. money this day and age. I mean, like, do I you want to win? But he's an MVP, so why do I need to worry about what weapons he has? If because he won at an the MVP, end of the day, what? football's a team game. He needs help. He, yeah, he needs help, clearly. They definitely do need more weapons. Aaron Rodgers, more a offense. former MVP. Look, I, he's got a wish list for the Jets. I need you to give me all this. Not only that, I believe that he could have played towards the end of last year when the Ravens were making that playoff push. I mean, your team's in the playoffs. You're telling me you're still that hurt? I don't think he was that hurt. He didn't I think even, he was sitting out for the but money. But he wanted his money. He I know, but listen, you're, you're, you're a on teammate. a team, man. But at the end of the day, if I'm putting my life at – football is a physical game, guys. We all know this. I'm putting my life at risk. I don't think I deserve my guaranteed money when, at the end of the day, my and the Players Association don't give a crap about me. Or how about this? How about this? We can't sit here and say – if he was injured, if he could have played or not. Regardless, he didn't even at least show up to the playoff game. He mm. didn't go to the sidelines, didn't go in the suite. He was at home. It's not like he had surgery. He didn't break his leg. He didn't have mm. an awful injury. So at the end of the day, I think that's the problem. I think people want him to support his team. And I get it. Go get your money. I think I Go think, get your money, but I, tough, you got to find a team that's going to give you the money. Yeah. I think he's going to find a team. I think the relationship with the Baltimore Ravens is over. I think it's done. They have cut their tie. Uh, he will be traded before the end of the season, before the start of next season, excuse me. Well, we shall see, but I want to talk about some athletic freaks. Mm -hmm. Athletic freaks in Glassboro mm -hmm. at Rowan University. Rob, are you an athletic freak? Man, I would have to say I'm an athletic freak. I think so. Mm -hmm. What did you say? What about you? I could, I could see you definitely. I, I, I can see you've been in the gym. I can tell. I am not, so I would exclude myself from this conversation. Yeah, that's why I said Kyle. So. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, I'm not going to say I'm an athletic freak, but like, if you want to get down for the traps and arms, like, you know who to call me. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. for scouting reports, they don't measure traps and arms. Now, Josh, we have an all-access combine draft coming up because it is the NFL draft coming up in less than a month. So who is your number one pick on cast and crew and editors? Can't forget Kerry. Who do you think is the number one pick to be that athletic freak. Oh, that's tough. I'm gonna kind of say I gotta go with the man that's not here, Shomer. Shomer. I gotta go with Shomer. He's the baller, man. I seen Shomer play. He's got hop. He's got a vertical. He's got handle. I mean, if it was basketball combine, Shomer would crush it. Interesting, interesting. But this is, this is a football combine. Yeah. It's a football combine. Mm, because oh, of draft. Danny. Oh, Dan, I gotta go, Kyle. Yeah, you got the size. Football, right, interesting. Yeah. They gotta go size. You guys gotta go with the size. So I like being the underdog. Just fuels me more. But listen, I might. You might be taking an L. If I'm not gonna say myself, I'm not. If I'm not gonna say myself, I'll give it to Kyle. I mean, you see this kid on the diamond. Look, look, I I, I appreciate that, but like, you know, we got we got Connor Bond out there catching fly ball. He, he's a speed Ooh. demon. We got Jordan Shepard that can knock Fletcher Cox off the line. Yeah, I've seen you know? it. Jeff Grugan, he's a small slot receiver. Yeah. You know, Nick Wiley's out there. Danny Ryan's done I'll stuff. I'll be a great you do your homework. I'll be a great. You do your homework. I, yeah, I do my he, homework. He does it's do draft season. I'm he ready. Does do his homework. Sam Prince, sneaky pick. Yeah. You know. I, mean, I can see him playing like a safety hybrid. Yeah, I mean, all the workouts can definitely see Sam, Sam a, a safety. You know, Laquan, he's out there. Oh, yeah, he's definitely out. a receiver, bro. I don't know what he's doing, but he's out there. He's out there. I don't <laughs> know what he's, he's doing, there. but he's at least out <laughs> he's there. He's out there. And yeah, nah, it's going to be good. I can't wait for that. So, right, so you're betting favorites on me? I mean, now that you said that, you're, I, it appears you don't have too much confidence in yourself. I'm just trying to make you save some money for this bets. Interesting. Well, yeah. speaking of bets, I'll look it over. Speaking of bets, we do have our bet of the week. So, Rob, kick us off with your bet of the week. Oh yeah. So, I mean, I'm gonna take the Brooklyn Nets money line and whatever the spread is over the Atlanta Hawks tonight. Brooklyn is home and they are looking to stay at the six seed, hopefully avoiding the playing game. Now, regarding Atlanta, these are the results of the last eight games played in order: loss, win, loss, win. Loss, win, loss, win. What's going to happen next, guys? You guessed it. <laughs> Sorry, Atlanta. Another loss for you guys tonight. That's interesting. That is, that is interesting. You know, I, I dug deep for that it, one. It, that, that's, I like that creativity right there. Uh, well, we got to pivot. 
Let's go O's, baby. <laughs> I'm taking the Baltimore Orioles money line against the Boston Red Sox. You know, they beat them already once on opening day. 10-9 did great things. So now with this young team and a great prospect, that catcher, the O's are going to shock people this year. I'm also going to give you a little added bonus here, okay? Take the over on the runs. It's sitting at 9. I expect a big third inning. And I just got to say, it doesn't make sense, but O's in 5. A big third inning. Interesting. Well, it is baseball season, but I'm going to stick with some. It is also another big game going on this weekend, and that's the final four. Then that will be between UConn and Miami, which will take place this Saturday in Houston at NRG Stadium. And I'm going with the Huskies and the spread under five. Both teams are relatively low-scoring teams, averaging about 70 points per game. And with the way UConn is rolling, they are a team on a mission that will go win the national championship. So I'm going with the UConn Huskies. Yeah, I like that pick. I'm a big U guy. All about the U. U. You know. Nice. Great school. Well, next up we have our Roman preview. Rob, kick us off. Yeah, so I mean the Rowan baseball team has been exceptional this year, posting a 13-4 record through 17 games played. Senior infielder Tyler Cannon has been on an absolute tear, hitting 481 on the year. Left-handed pitcher Zach Grace continues his dominance on the mound with a 1.57 ERA. Now Cannon and Grace's play is a big reason why the squad is now ranked 10th in the country. They'll host William Patterson in a doubleheader on Saturday, April 1st, with the first pitch being thrown at 11.30 a.m. That's a great preview, Rob. Thanks, I, I really think that. that's, a, that's a good one. I want to check it out. I hope everyone else wants to check it out as well. But the Rowan women's lacrosse team has been crushing it as usual. They're going to be sitting at a 7-2 and two record as they take on Christopher Newport University in Virginia. Jamie Coltelera leads the team with 24 goals and 8 assists, while Julia Corston and Aaron Renshaw are right behind her with 20 and 22 goals. We're looking forward to another win in Virginia and keep on winning in this NJAC. I'm going to say it. They're going to keep on winning, and we're going to be uh, handling Christopher Newport. It's been an amazing year for our profs, like mm -hmm. fall, spring, summer. Like, they've just, they've been killing just it. Just wiping Walter. the floor. Exactly. they just sweeping, bro, sweeping. Sweet. See you. And I'm going to stick with, we're going to stick with Rowan as well as I go up with the Rowan softball team. Rowan split a doubleheader double header with so sophomore. In the first game, Rowan won 13-5 in five innings. Corey Haig was 2-4 for four with three RBIs and two runs scored as the home team took advantage of the nine walks in the first game. And in the second game, things got a little bit messed up. That's where they, Rowan lost 4-3 against sophomore, used a two-run double from Brooke Connie in the top of the seven to take a late lead and hold off a late, a late Rowan push. Rowan will open the NJAC play on Saturday when they travel to William Patterson for two, for, for two starting games at 1 p.m. Very exciting times right what an, here. What an episode. What a preview. What a bet. Yeah. I can't wait to look at your preview and your bet because I'm cashing in. Oh, yeah? Are you, you know? You I'm looking for your NFL all-access draft. Outlook. Oh man, I gotta reevaluate mine. You know, yeah, we all gotta look into that. But we you have might be my number one overall pick, though. I, I gotta Ooh. give it to you. You know, I, this this pressure. The the lines are splitting. You know, things are Yo, going the crazy. The first pick, I might be selecting Kyle Hoos. So you heard it here you might first. Might be getting your name and the commit hug from the commissioner, which is me. So all right, sounds good. I'm ready to take my my picture. You know. Hey, how you want to do your handshake? I want I want straight straight handshake. Straight handshake? Hold it, hold all the right. jersey. You know, all get right. that ready. It's gonna be a good time. Hey, what y'all go to handshake too? <laughs> what's your go to handshake for y'all? Well, we'll figure out our next handshake on the next episode of All Access. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.